This week on the podcast. We cut to the exterior shot of a hilly San Francisco street. Johnny's car pulls up to a flower shop. Johnny enters the flower shop. Hi. Can I help you? Removing sunglasses. Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Johnny exits with the roses and gets in his car. Come join us, why don't you? Hello and welcome to the official team of our podcast number 206. I am Charlie Danger 82. With me tonight, I have Craig. Hello. I have occasionally Randall. Woo woo. Uh, we may have a special guest later on, but until then, we have the man who's become an, a man. Uh, we have Jamie. Happy birthday, Jamie. Thank you. I'm. I'm more man. You are more man. Like You're still John, my like boy. Joseph John Smith or Joseph Smith. <laughs> <laughs> You're still my boy. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but you are a man boy. Um, so, congratulations. You're, you're 22 now. Uh, yeah. So, that's 18 years younger than Craig and I. Damn. Yeah. 18 years, God. Nice. Damn it. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Huh? <laughs> hey, like you AD. Asked if... oh. Oh. Someone had to make an old joke. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that someone had to be you. Yeah. It's cool. I'm good. Close. Cool. Heather's not here tonight, so she can't make any. Horrible remarks about ages, so <laughs> you, you you will have to substitute. Um, <laughs> yeah, you 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 had asked on Twitter any advice for uh, gr growing another year older, <laughs> and um, yeah, man, just don't uh, don't feel old until you're old, you know. Don't yeah. because I I can remember like I started feeling old when I had broken the precipice of twenty one. And gone into 22, you know, I, I started feeling feeling old, but it's a state of mind. You know, you if you feel, if you perceive yourself as being old, you're going to be old. Like, I've been perceiving myself as being old for a long time. And um, there was a time where Craig probably didn't perceive himself as being old. But I believe I have broken him down so much <laughs> that now he probably feels older than me. Um, yeah. Yep. I don't True. believe my misery should True. be contained to me. So... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So, it's true. Things, it's things hurt now. Damn true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember a couple of years ago, I went, you know, I went to get a physical. And doctors doctor was talking to me about random you know, stuff, whatever. And he goes, well, just remember, the warranty runs out at 40. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Damn. <laughs> wow, the yep. word runs out at 40. My God. Mm -hmm. It made me feel a little bit better, too, because after that, he said that he was switching practices. Uh, <laughs> these, doctors were, these doctors were starting a new practice, and they needed a new senior doctor. And he's oh, like, wow. it's like his mid-40s. So he's wow. like, yeah, I feel even older. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh something. It is. You know, it's it's your twenties are great. They're just a as, as far as like I feel like man, I miss my twenties and I, I say that because I do miss them. I can't remember a lot of them. Uh <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like the best thing to do is just fight it in every aspect you can. Okay. Exactly. Because for someone my age, I've gone through 
certain medical procedures that people double my age usually go through. Absolutely. As, mm -hmm. as previously told on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, if anyone is wondering, ask Dave. <laughs> oh, you should have. Hey. Jamie told a story. It's hilarious. Then, of course, I listened to fucking the most terrifying thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Thanks, David. I yeah, forgot that he doesn't perceive things as humans do. My apologies <laughs> for that, Damien. Uh, yeah. Oh, but basically, I've just, I've just figured that any chance that I have to fight feeding the old in any way, I just do. There you go. So, you know, I'm 22 now. I play, I still play Pokemon. I still do that kind of shit. And I'm going to continue to do it until, until I break my thumbs, I guess. <laughs> there, there you have go. it. There you go. It's, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's part of why I've migrated my way back to Rooster Teeth in Achievement Hunter. Uh, realizing that Ryan is close to my age and uh, Jeff is older than yep. Craig and I. So really? it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, Jeff Ramsey over at Rooster Teeth. Well, a lot of the dudes at Rooster Teeth, the original crew, the guys who actually started on Red vs. Blue, they're all like our age they're and their, a little bit older. Yeah. They're all in their 40s, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I think that's why I've started to migrate back to them. Uh, you know, the gap between you and you and I is probably the same gap as like Bernie and Gavin. I think that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's so unreal. <laughs> That is so unreal. Um, wait, wait. Actually, no. Wait a second. I think it's more like a ten-year difference between those two, because um, I doubt Bernie is forty-eight. That, oh, it might be a little less. I think Gavin's yeah. twenty-eight, and Bernie yeah. might be like early forties. Yeah. Uh, can you hear a tapper? What? <laughs> Root beer tapper. <laughs> I think. Oh, uh, mystery guest. There we go. Uh, oh, our mystery hey. guest is here. It's a truly hey, international cast today, much like uh, Dragon Sound from the movie Miami Connection. We 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 have George here as well. Hi, George. Hey, gentlemen, how's it going? Not bad. Not bad. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, oh hi, George. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's some classic. We have we have to turn the. Uh, this entire podcast into the room. Then again, my Twitter feed is usually turning into like the end scene from the room with all of you people. It's like, yeah. I think you trade. I hate all of you motherfuckers. You all betrayed me. I hate you. I'm going alone. I'm tired of this world. And just like, you know, withdrawing into myself, you know. So <laughs> that's usually right. how I say peace out to discussions with anyone on Twitter. I wanna I wanna uh. be I wanna be Donnie. <laughs> The weird young kid that likes to watch. <laughs> Leave oh. us! <laughs> Can I kiss you? Can <laughs> 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 like, <could> I watch? <laughs> oh, of course you can. And then you well. can walk upstairs and see me getting framed by a drug dealer. <laughs> oh, more drugs! <laughs> I'm on drugs, but I love uh. you. <laughs> oh, god. Oh, oh god, that means that Craig is, uh, Craig is Mark. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> oh, hi, Craig. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> ah. But strangely enough, Lisa is Randall. Uh, oh, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> What that kind of in the world stuff did I just walk into? Does that mean George is Lisa's mom? <laughs> oh, hold on now. Without question or hesitation. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> possibly. <Huh. laughs> Further inspection. At any point in time, this podcast can turn into the room. <laughs> yes, it, absolutely. Sometimes we throw footballs back and forth in tuxedos. <laughs> is there any reason to have a bunch of tuxedos here? <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> so um, so yeah, it's uh, God, that would be great. Like a, 
It's, it is the best, isn't it? It's it's just so, and it's done with such earnest too. Ugh, such I, earnest, like earnest. I hope, the, I hope by the time people listen to this, this would already happened. Can the intro for this podcast be us reciting a scene from the room? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's... <laughs> wait, wait, the room or the trailer from the disaster movie. <laughs> I, I think we should go full room on this. <laughs> so how's your sex life? <laughs> oh, I can't talk about that. Um, oh, that oh, that thirty second scene where he gets flowers. <laughs> You're my favorite customer. <laughs> I didn't recognize you. <laughs> Fucking lie! Look at him. Thank you. Talk thank you. Bye. Apple. Hi, doggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. He says his back looks like an alien. George is so happy his microphone works now. Oh, God. <laughs> Holy crap. You're not wrong, because at the very least I get to watch from the outside in this regard. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. It's very true. I mean, I have wow. seen the movie with friends before, and I know exactly what you're referring to. It was just one of those things I was like, what am I watching? <laughs> <laughs> I This seems familiar to me. <laughs> yeah. Sadly. Sadly for me. <laughs> Yeah, and my one buddy uh, who I used to work with at my other job, he basically went to a limited showing over at a theater that was going on, and he basically met the creator of the room himself. And while he was just talking to him, he was like, oh, let me see your dog tags. He takes it off of him, and he basically tells his friend, you, you, got, you got a camera on your phone, right? Go ahead. And he asks him to record it, and he basically blesses his dog tags, hands it over to him. You're now invincible. Go out. <laughs> Wow. It was the oddest thing I've ever seen on his phone. He was just laughing. It was like, if it wasn't for the fact that I was half drunk, honestly, I I would have just probably decked him under normal circumstances. Say you're he invisible. He just laughed it off. <laughs> he punched me. <laughs> no one punches me. I'm invisible. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, oh. if, you, if anybody hasn't seen it yet, watch The Room. It's life-changing. And then look forward to the disaster artist coming out soon. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the movie was, but I know there's a very terrible movie that came out not too long ago that Tommy Wiseau was like, this is the best thing ever. Indoors by Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> it was like that he was like going nuts about it and he was like, I want to make a sequel to this. I want to be, be a part of the future of this. And it's just like, this is the worst movie ever made. Nothing else is going to happen with it. Shut up, you. It's... Well, it's shit, Greg, Greg Sestero and him are reunited after so many years. Yeah, they made, uh, like, a, they made like a documentary. No, no, it's an actual feature film. Uh, hold on. Uh, it's called, it's called see, Best see, Friends. To the but internet. The art, but the R is in, like, parenthesis. <laughs> Best Friends. Or else it's getting kickstarted. Uh, yeah, you're right. Oh, because the, the R is in parentheses. Because if you take that R out, it's Best Fiends. Oh. Please, please, let me let me give you the synopsis of... The, actually, Jamie, are you looking at the synopsis? Of oh, Best Fiends. Yep. Yeah, the, 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 the one that starts with when. Showing one plot summary. The, the plot summary, right there. When a drifter is taken by a particular mortician... The two hatch an underground enterprise off the back of the mortician's old habits. Greed, hatred, and jealousy soon comes in turns, and their efforts unra- unravel, causing the drifter to run off with, sp- with the spores and leave the mortician adrift. An expedition across the southwest introduced cra- wild and crazy characters through a series of twists and tur- twisted and dark foibles as both men learn a valuable lesson about friendships and loyalty. That sounds... That Just... sounds right. Just like the most amazing thing I have ever heard. I I, I can't wait to see it. Let's see. Humor. So how do I make with the... There we are. With the funny pictures. Okay, here we go. Like a... Show me on the doll. <laughs> Show me on the doll. <laughs> sure. Where? Tommy... I so touched you. Um, <laughs> speaking of James Franco. Oh, my. 
I, I saw another James Franco film uh, a couple days ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Which one? Uh, it's a movie that uh, he was in for a whopping... Okay, if you, uh, watch <laughs> that, if you don't watch the behind-the-scenes things, roughly three minutes. It's a uh, very brief connection. Very brief connection. Alien Covenant. Oh, yeah? How was it? Alien... I liked it. Nice. It, it did a particularly impossible thing for me in that I watched the movie and said, Hey, that Danny McBride, he ain't too bad in this. <laughs> <laughs> How often does that happen? Not very. Not very. Not a fan <laughs> of Danny McBride. <laughs> is his role in that comedic at all? Um, not really. Like, it, like he has a yep. few sides. He, he jokes a little bit, but at the same the time, he, he pulls it together. That's the thing. I find there's a lot of comedic actors that are better when they're not being comedic. Yeah. Like, Adam Sandler. If he's in, like, an actual drama, he can actually do quite well. Mm-hmm. But when he tries to be goofy over the top, he's just no. Like that depressing movie with the remote control. Click. I yeah. like click. If you point this at your wife, you can pause her or fast forward to the end of the argument. Uh, Go ahead, <laughs> d- do it. Isn't it great? I can't believe your Adam Sandler <laughs> married to Kate back in sale. That's the most ridiculous thing about every Adam Sandler movie is exactly. who, the, who gets to play his wife. <laughs> make it re- make it realistic. If you're gonna have your wife, make your wife be you in drag, because then it'll make sense. Yeah, <laughs> like that him and her or whatever the hell he was in Shim and Shara or I I don't even know. I never, no, uh, not Jack that one. Jill. Jack and Jill, thank you. Shim and Shara. Shim and uh, him. <laughs> Shim and him. Offensive tie ever. <laughs> I I think that that should have just been that should be just be Adam Sandler's and his relationship in every movie. You're right. I, I agree with Jamie on this. Um, but yeah, um, Danny McBride was good. Um, uh, what's his face? Fastbender was great. Um, I'll do I, He says, "What's that?" There was that one part where he says, "I'll do the finger." <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll do the fingering. Yep. <laughs> hold it as, hold it like so. <laughs> Blow into this end, and I will do the fingering. Uh, <laughs> and com- that entire scene was complete masturbation. Um, in a good way. But of in his a writer of his fans, which of it? <laughs> well, no, to, that scene itself is literal masturbation. Because technically he was playing with himself. Oh. Ah! Um. I think. Um. It. What? When did it come out, Jamie? Uh, it came out what? Two years ago. Well, Alien Covenant. No, no, a year ago. A year ago. Covenant. What? Twenty seventeen. Yeah. Um. But it came this out year. a while ago. May. Uh. It's not oh, giving away too much. It's not giving away too much because it was in the trailers. Uh, Fastbender plays two people. Yeah. He's two different robots. He's two different he's a, robots. He's a robot from Prometheus and a new robot. Yeah. He's a David and Walter. I think Walter is awesome, by the way. Um, Walter's the good one, right? Yeah. Walter's the one with the American accent. And, That's uh, probably doesn't make sense. What was he and, originally? Uh, oh, he's, he's uh, British, British right? and shit all crazy. Um, oh, no, you're talking I mean, about the actor himself. Fastbender, German born right? Irish. German born Irish. <laughs> You're the one who has IMDb open, silly. You tell me. Um, I'm on the ball. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> no, you're on the you're on the B. Um, <laughs> but uh, Fassbender's great in it. Uh, the female lead was pretty Ka- good. Catherine Waterston. That's her name. I guess so. Never heard of her. What's she been in? Uh, Catherine. Oh, no, she, <laughs> she was in Fantastic Beasts. Ah, and where to find them. Yeah. I think I'm assuming she was the female lead. There you go. Uh, Billy Crudup. Uh, Big Blue Wang from, uh, what's his face? Uh, Watchmen. Watchmen. Yeah. There was, um, it's, it's giving a lot of cool insight into the Xenomorph itself. Um, 
is giving more background information on it, which is cool. There's Fuck. one more movie to happen, so it's going to be interesting to see how they leave off on this one and how they get to Alien, the first one. So, Do you think they'll do a uh, Rogue One and the last scene of the next one will be like the very beginning of Alien? I certainly hope so. And they have like a digitally de-aged Sigourney River. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, they did it with Covenant, with uh, Crew Expendable, the DLC. Uh, oh yeah. So, uh, but I, I must I must say that uh, so there's I think there's eight years, eight or nine years between this film and Alien, like in movie years. Um. And if in 10 years it can go from D to W, I'm thinking that there are a few more Andrew, Android models and then they reset it to A so that they can have Ash in Alien. Oh, um, okay, the movies, uh, Alien Covenant is 2104, Alien is 2122. Okay, so we got some time, we got some time. We got so time. Oh, yeah. How many is in between the other one? Uh, Prometheus and this one was 10 years, I believe. 10, 11, yeah. 10 or 11 years. Oh, okay. Found out that androids can grow long hair. Well, uh, gotta make him human to feel more relaxed. Yeah. Bet Walter can't grow no hair. Um... There, there, there's a few things that I would love to discuss that were spoilerific, that I believe have things to do with the next film. But uh, that, that is a, that, that's the, that's for an Alien Covenant spoiler cast that we'll do never. Um, would, you, would you say this movie feels very much like the middle? Of the yes. Story? So there's yes, a lot really of setup. Does. You feel? Yeah. The, uh, the pacing, everything to do with it, the introduction of the new monsters. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think um, what I might plan to do then, because I haven't seen Alien, Covenant, or Prometheus, I might mm -hmm. wait for the third one and watch all three together. That's probably your best bet. That's probably your best bet. Because I, li I like to get a complete story. Because mm -hmm. saying yeah, that, that way. I, I was once, I once for some reason watched the second Hobbit movie without ever watching the first. <laughs> I've, I've, I've never seen the third either, so I've got like a weird middle part of the story in my head. Wow. I just don't want to so, slow. You, have you ever told David that? Because he, he's going to shit all over the place. I'm pretty sure I know this. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I never managed to get into Lord of the Rings. I watched half of the first one. That's about it. Did you tell David that? Because he's entirely going to shit himself. There's a lot of things you can tell. I have things stored up to <laughs> tell Dave. Spaced out over time, just in case I need to. Uh oh, said, Dave's chasing me with an axe. I only like, read one Lord of the Rings. It's like oh, this to shit himself. It's like when the um, it's like in uh, Civil War when that guy gets the book and he reads off a load of phrases to the Winter Soldier and the Winter Soldier goes nuts. <laughs> I have certain things to say to Dave just to set him off if I ever needed to. If I ever needed a, if I ever needed escape, I'll just be like to Dave. I don't really like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and, and, oh. I, like, I think Mass Effect's kind of boring. <laughs> and, and Dark oh, Souls is too easy. Totally glad you brought that one up. Uh oh. Uh, so so I'm playing more Mass Effect. Um, uh huh. Mass Effect and Andromeda, and um. Mass Effect, the one that I'll never get DLC. Uh, the, yeah. Yeah, that, support for that is uh, over. <laughs> Yes, they they said that they might in the future do something for multiplayer, but as far as that game goes, that ship has sailed. Um, Tied upon impact, really. It really did. Uh, I'm I think forty four percent through the uh, the story, and I gotta tell you, the story is it's not that bad. It's it's not a bad story, um, but at the same time, it's it's just. There's some really lazy writing in some parts. Like I mentioned, uh, I think last week or the week beforehand, the the whole, yeah, so we have a 
Krogan on the crew. We have an Asari and looking through the ship in 20 minutes, not finding a Krogan and then getting him on the next mission. Um, <laughs> the same said Krogan, though. I had to choose between four of his scouting team or like, oh, I don't know, all the Solarians that were on the Ark. And he was pissed because I chose all the Solarians. But he's yelling at me to just like, you know, wow, oh, you left my people behind. I hate you. And then the next breath is, yeah, we should go investigate this and then get a drink. I'm like, okay. All right. Okay. And then I went through the entire loyalty mission. I let him kill a dude just for kicks, just for shits and giggles. I let him do whatever he wanted to throughout the entire mission. And then he has the balls to turn around to me and say, just like, you know, Oh, Shepard, or fucking Ryder, whatever the fuck your name is, uh, you let my fucking, <laughs> you let my dudes die, so, you know, hey, you have your agenda, but I got mine. And I'm like, okay, dude. <laughs> Can I unlock your abilities past this point? Awesome. Cool. Do we gotta talk again? I fucking hope not. Um, I like the idea of him just be like, so... shut up, Shepard. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> so would you rather be playing this or Dragon Age? I'd rather be playing hey. Dragon Age. Because oh. yeah. at least that's put together. Um, it works. The game works. From a technical aspect, it works. Um, I gotta I, uh, tell something that put this on your list that would Uh-oh. make uh, Dave shit himself. <laughs> I don't like the story for Dragon Age. Inquisition. Any of them, really. Um, I thought they were kind of boring. I thought that they were kind of like meandering um cookie yeah, cutter just, yeah exactly it's it's just like it's, there was nothing new that happened in dragon age that happened in the realm of fantasy and i i just like okay played the first one played the second one and i played like four hours of inquisition couldn't get out of the fucking hinterland so i was like peace um and, uh, yeah, I, I just really couldn't get into it. I just found it really boring. Um, but, like Mass Effect, I don't find boring. There are some tropes that are, of course, the same uh, that you find in every sci-fi thing, but there's always something different. And Mass Effect's uh, Andromeda even has different ideas. It's just that it's an ugly, ugly game that is just riddled with technical difficulties. And that kind of... That's off-putting at it, but I have committed myself, and I am, I believe, I believe I am 28 hours into it, so I can't exactly back out now. <laughs> I'll see no you're invested. turning back. Yeah. What was that, George? No, nah, so you're invested. See, I was lucky enough that basically the enemies were glitching into certain spots and they couldn't move, mm-hmm. and some of the hits were not even registering, that I basically just couldn't handle it, so I just stopped playing entirely. I still have it on my hard drive with the urge to continue to see what happens next, but uh, I'm there kind were, of wary of touching it. There was one time where 17 people in the room killed me, then it loaded back in and there were no one in the room. Just everyone was gone. Like, like you just skipped ahead of the fight and it was done already for you? Apparently. Or, hmm. I'm like, I like walked into the room and no one's there. I'm like, okay, all right, we're just gonna keep on walking. Um, yeah. Honestly, the only thing that really sometimes. hooked me was, oh, sorry. I'm just saying, do they not play test games sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> There's one they didn't. Um, I, I, I just, it's, it's just a sad tale, essentially. Yeah. It is. Something that had a lot of promise, basically just going Hindenburg style. Yeah. So Not let's... even the laugh that you get from hearing, oh, the humanity over and over. Right? <laughs> so that's just funny. But, um... Oh, speaking of blimps... See, it's a random segue. Oh. I was watching um, Last Crusade before mm-hmm. on Amazon Prime Video, and the one cool thing about Amazon Prime Video is that if you tap on this the screen um it gives you little blurbs about the scene so it'll tell you that you know that the actors names that are in it 
It gives you links to their IMDb page. It gives you history of what's going on in the background. And it gives you little like bloopers and goofs things. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the part where they're they're in the Zeppelin, they're trying to escape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know, that he's they sit down before the uh, SS guy comes in. His dad is reading a paper, and I never noticed this before. The paper is upside down. <laughs> <laughs> he picks it up off of the seat and just opens it and starts, you know, reading it, and they're still kind of talking. The paper is upside down. Hmm. It's like, huh, I know, I like that. <laughs> I, now, I now have a new life goal. I want to be in extra movies who reads upside down books. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. I also, just want make to sure do, you're, make sure you're do, in medieval movies and wear like wristwatches and stuff too. Yeah, I just want to do like tiny little things that they might just not notice, just mm-hmm. so that it can like just be there. So I could like sit in the movie theater, I could just like sit the that guy in the back, just read the paper upside down. That's me. You can be the new Sean Connery of reading upside down. See that guy in a suit <laughs> wearing slippers. That's me. <laughs> wow. Well. Oh. I'll be in the back. I'll be in like some like um, some like um, British drama set in the like nineteen <laughs> eighties or whatever, and there'll be people smoking pipes, and I'll just be doing one, and bubbles will be coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. That'd be awesome. Oh, you were part of the movie. Which one were you? The one without the pants. Oh, that was you. <laughs> You have to look me, really. Yeah, you'll see me. <laughs> you'll oh, you'll see me. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the guy in the kilt? Nah, just some copycat. <laughs> kilt? What's a kilt? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but um. Uh... Who are you in this scene? Oh, I'm the prison inmate crying with flowers. Oh, God. <laughs> um... <laughs> Bunch of men like working out, and then there's just me holding a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I'm the doctor who uses a stethy stethoscope, but it's not in his ears. <laughs> it's in your mouth. <laughs> I just uh, got it on my forehead. <laughs> Go, going back to the prison thing. Going, but going back to the prison thing. <laughs> Andy Dufresne cried into his flowers every day. <laughs> <laughs> Shawshank Jamie. <laughs> oh my god. So um if if you I, I don't know what's wrong with me. Actually, we're going to leave it at that. Uh so <laughs> uh Blizzard put out a ton of cinematics over the past like I don't know, 24 hours. Um, well, actually, so two much, three days because we so got watch stuff now. Yeah, yeah, Junker Town got a got a little short for Junker Town, which is involving, a new map. which is a new map, and, and you get a new little movie to go with it because it's uh it's Junkrat and Roadhog trying to break in to Junker Town. There's so much stuff they could do with the Overwatch world in terms yeah, of yeah. just media. It's just oh. so great. They've literally made a game that they could like span into like a franchise just on that. Absolutely, That's what they do. It's a they, it feeds on human but, emotions. Like, they, like they've got what they've got twenty four characters in the game. They could pick like four of them and make a TV series based on just that four. Like, oh yeah, four random characters and just make them work I, together. And I just want them. I just want Blizzard to make a uh, animated movie. Oh, that would be awesome. It would just knock anything Pixar had out of the water. I yep. mean, that's what yeah. they are. They're, they're like the shorts you get before Pixar movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if if I can see an animated movie like their, uh, you know, Diablo and Warcraft cutscenes, oh, I would be very, very happy. <laughs> so great. Well, the the second one that came out today, Rise and Shine, uh, May's backstory. Um, God, that's stuff. It's so sad. Look, I yeah. know Snowball lived. I know yeah, Snowball I knew, is I knew alive Snowball and well. I was going to be back because I knew he. Sh- I was like, 
Did it stop me from fucking crying? No, I'm not. I'm not too ashamed to say that because Blizzard are horrible people. Um, <laughs> the bit where she makes like tea or whatever and puts them in front of the in front of the coffin, yeah. cups of her dead teammates and just like promises them that she's going to continue for them. Like, wow, that's very stoic of you. <laughs> but uh, damn. I, lo- I love the origins of her weapon as well. Yeah, I, I, th- I thought that was such an ironic twist. I loved it. That it was I, a I, hair dryer. I didn't. I didn't watch it. <laughs> sum it up for me. Uh, she she makes her freeze gun out of a hair dryer. Oh, it's like the hair like, dryer, like a water tank. It it, then, slowly, it slowly assembles in front of you as she's finding different things to use to build her gun. She slowly makes it. Tremendous. Then the power dies in the building, so she's like, "This is hopeless. I'm gonna die now." So the little AI thing snowball plugs itself in and uses all its battery power to power it just enough so she can continue. Yeah, basically self-sacrifices himself for her. And I'm like, I know you live, but at the same time, this does not stop me from feeling as though I have lost you forever. Damn. So she, like, fixes the uh, radio tower. Mm-hmm. She, like, she... Uses, it, she uses her ice gun to, like, to continue to climb up and, like, hold it in place and everything like that. Mm-hmm. She manages to get the signal through, finds a Overwatch broadcast, and it's the... Uh, it's the Winston intro. Yeah. And like just telling people to to band together. Say, Not say give up. Keep fighting. And then she walks off into the sun and she's got Snowball with like a um, she's got like a solar panel and he slowly charges up and comes back to life. It's pretty so, nice. It's, it's an amazing short. They did such a good job. And it's, the thing that made it for me was the fact that she was she did have like those emotional lows but when she had like that high she was bubbly and she had that optimism that just bled through her performance i just thought it was a good short overall oh yeah very good very good you see all the little things that are like pushing the kept that push the characters to come back like even though we know they're all gonna they all basically have their reasons they're all gonna be there they're all we know they're all there it's nice to see what's what the thing is that pushes each one of them to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, the one that I'm waiting for at this point is the one for Lucio, because going by the Lord that they've dropped in the background, I'm really interested in see how he and Symmetra are going to go. How does he... Now, hmm? I, I haven't looked really closely, I guess, but in the soccer uniforms he has in the Summer Games. Yeah. Are we... Does he have skates on? I thought they were still pretty hover skates. The, okay. the actual blades itself. Okay. Can you mention how cool it was that, that for most of the uh, short, May was wearing a Summer's Game jersey? Kind of thing. Yeah. That was that pretty was awesome. Cool. Even in universe, it's like it's still their Olympics kind of thing. I love things like that. I love, I love this like world of Overwatch. Like, even though I'm not the best at the actual game, and like, I kind of go in and out and whether or not I want to play, depending on if there's an event and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I understand the people who can play it non-stop because it is fun, but like, I get to like three or four losses. I'm like, okay, I'm done for a little bit. I don't but know like, anybody like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I still just love that universe. That's like, I just want more. I just want to learn more about the world of Overwatch and all the characters and how they. I want to know how every character interacts with one another and how they see each other. Yeah, I mean, I'm the, I'm the same way. I'll go... I, I'm not <laughs> playing... Uh, I haven't played Overwatch in, I'd say, like a month or two, but still, like... When Did you open your free so, boxes? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so, technically, I opened up the game to open the loot boxes from Twitch, but I haven't actually played it. But um, I, I just... Uh, Still, if any news comes out from it, or if there's a new character, if anything, I'm just I jump in to see what's going on with it because it's just so good. Check it out. They put a Hearthstone short out today, a music, uh, a musical number for Hearthstone. Good. And it was quite amazing. (laughs) They so took that guy from uh, Beauty and the Beast. Oh yeah, that was so (laughs) gaston. Yes, it was. Certainly was, <laughs> just with less, less chest hair. 
Yep. Even the song started to sound like it at one point. <laughs> oh yeah. But yeah, they they do magic over there at Blizzard. I strange horrible they magics. Some, they do some stuff out there in Nevada. Yeah. That Although, that's where they're based out of? I'm pretty sure that's where they were. I'll find out. Hmm. You're a saying, George? So, we talked about the May trailer, but what about the one for Junkertown? What are you guys' thoughts on that? It looked a lot like they were just using the... It, it looked like somebody doing... Um, it was in-game Yeah. models kind of thing. You could yeah, it sort of looked like, you know, Gary's Mod, kind of. Yeah. Um, I had it, that impression, I heard, too. I heard, I, heard, I heard people compare it to uh, Team Fortress 2 video kind of things. Yeah, the the shadow shadow machine something animating program that they do. Yeah, it, it looked a lot like that, and um, didn't exactly have the same polish that usually the shorts would have. But I think that it was pretty funny, stuck to the characters well, and uh, it had the outcome that the characters would probably have. Like I, I, I actually had to look up on their YouTube channel that it was actually from. Them play Overwatch and not fan exactly. Yep. I think because that one was more of a just a uh, that was more of a map reveal kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. I think it's a nice little. They go up one step beyond and make something a little bit fun for that. One step beyond. Because they they had that they had that short and then they had they have just a video that's just Junker Town with the uh, Queen narrating over it. Yeah, the Junk which, Queen, which always interests me. Like, mm. like as soon as you like listen to it and you hear like a new voice in Overwatch, you're thinking, what's the plans for this character? Exactly, that's going to be a character sooner or later. Yeah. yeah. Like people are saying, is this going to be like a female version of Junkrat kind of thing, or a similar kind of character? Oh, I'm kind of thinking Thunderdome, Mad Max kind of thing. They're going to uh, base well, it off of Jennifer Negri's cosplay of uh, Roadhog from uh, the Comic Con she goes to. Wait, it's, just, it's wait just, Jessica Negri? It's, yeah, yeah. She, did, she did one of Roadhog? Yep. Yeah. Huh. Weird. And there you have it. Yeah, that's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, that's the end of that. Um, uh, so, <laughs> I, I'm think I, I'm trying to make a good segue, but I think that's the end of that. Was probably what Cesaro said about the beach ball in SummerSlam 2017. Oh, how was so, it? Yeah. I I didn't get to watch it. For the first time in, like, I'd say a year and a half, I watched a pay-per-view WWE event from start to finish and said, huh, I've been entertained with the exception of one match, and, um, all right, I'm satisfied with this. A lot of good in-ring storytelling, a lot of good, um, a lot of good matches. There was a squash match halfway through with Rusev and Randy Orton that lasted, I believe, three minutes. I don't know who Rusev uh, pissed off this time. Um, they fed, uh, Baron Corbin to Big Show Johnny because I guess, uh, Baron Corbin got uppity with somebody on Twitter, uh, the wrong person. So, uh, Big Show Johnny came out and he wasn't even taking the, he wasn't even taking the match seriously. And he just basically walked over Baron Corbin. Um, didn't last too long, but the rest of the matches for the entire night were pretty damn good. Um, okay, everybody knows that shark cage matches are stupid. But there was a match between Enzo and, uh, or Big Cass and the Big Show. And Enzo was in the shark cage. And of course, for the entire match, you just hear Enzo talking because that's what's giving him so much heat in the locker room. He never turns that off in real life. And people are like, would you shut the fuck up? So he's above the ring, and he's shouting and shouting and shouting, and uh, uh, the uh, the Ascension and Big Cass had teamed up and smashed uh, the Big Show's hand so he couldn't use his right hand for, like, the choke slams or anything. And, uh, like, near the end of the match, 
you see Enzo take his jersey off, and then you see Enzo take his shorts off. Oh. And then reach down and grab like a little bottle of baby oil, throw it all over him. He looped himself up and got himself out of the shark cage between the bars. And I was like, huh. you know what? I I can't find something wrong with this. I really can't find anything wrong with this. This is actually quite funny. Uh, of course, after all the effort and landing there, one big boot from Cass just knocked him out and then Cass won the match. But yeah, whatever. It was funny. That's what I learned. Um, I, you know what? It serves them right if they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to do <laughs> And, you know, I, like, just, there, there were bits like that. Um, the, the main event was just absolutely crazy. Uh, I, I won't spoil that one because that's, that's something that should be seen. The, the four man, uh, the four man fight between Lesnar, Reigns, um, Samoa Joe, and uh, Braun Strowman. That was one hell of a match. And I just walked away from it saying, you know what? Th this, uh, this doesn't happen very often, but I, I was engaged in a in a pay per view. You know, th this was good. This wasn't just like you know one match being good and then the rest being shit. It was good all through and through. Oh, that's good. So, um, hmm, not bad. But uh, yeah. So if you have WWE Network, I highly suggest uh go and check it out. It's good. It's worth 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 the uh, worth your time. Worth your time. It was and worth ten dollars a month. Yes, nine ninety nine. I I find that the the cost of that is just watching old matches and you know just going back in time. Oh yeah, watch stuff. Um, very little of the new stuff is actually watched in this hizzy. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's one of the animated shows. I haven't gotten around to watching it yet. The animated show. Okay, Table for Three is excellent. That's when you just got three dudes or three ladies from different, either different genre, different walks of life in the WWE or just um, like different promotionals and stuff like that. Like they, they had a really good one with, uh, I think it was uh, Kevin Nash, HBK, and AJ Styles. And that was great. Um, they had the New Day sitting there. Uh but yeah, they just uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. So, uh they I just... want to watch the uh, the one. Didn't they have one where they're um, telling stories from their car their uh, car trips? Oh, that road trip, road trip, road trip, great. road trip. Oh my god, there there was one with Gals and Anderson and, a and AJ that was just amazing. Uh, it's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the Miz and uh, Dolph Ziggler, J just they those are cool episodes. I like those. Um, the the Glory Day story that are animated are great too, because you have like everything ranging from you know what happens when Andre the Giant doesn't wash his uh, singlet for a while to uh, to to like nowadays where. Uh, or, or like a, a midnight road trip with like Mick Foley, so it, it's it's <laughs> it's just amazing. Like the, the the animated the extra content they have on there, the originals are pretty damn good. Uh, Camp WWE, don't play it for the kids. It might be animated, but uh, they don't censor <laughs> any of the language, and they got Stone Cold on there. So um, uh, and I believe he has oh, what's it called? The uh, he's talking to Paige. And he's flipping her off at the same time, but they're not having an aggressive conversation. And, and she's just like, why, why are you flipping me off? He's like, oh, sorry, that's my fuck you, Ray. Relax. <laughs> 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 but, um, but yeah, it, it's, I, it's uh, one of the weirdest things on it is that Mc, Vince McMahon does his own voice on Camp WWE, which I think is fantastic. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, because, I mean, why would he do something to make himself look like a joke? 
Well, they got he his does. walk down. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that, that's the extra features, the old shows that are on there. It's definitely worth the price every month to to pay for it. The ten bucks. Um, it keeps me entertained, and uh, and that's really all that counts, really. But um, that is, yeah. So, I don't have to rely on on pay per views to justify the cost. And that's not a bad thing. Oh, hmm. yep. Oh, get this shit. Uh oh. Okay. So. Um, not, not to change the subject off of WWE. I'm, I'm sure that Irish guy appreciates it though. Um, what? so no, there, there's, there's a dude that, um, that won a few contests, uh, from us and, uh, he just doesn't like it when we talk about the WWE. So I just make it, sh- make damn sure that we bring up the WWE at least once in every podcast. Um, like the new character roster that they revealed in their upcoming game. You know what? I didn't see that. Yeah, I think they uh, headlined the article blast with Shinsuke Nakamura on it. I thought it was pretty entertaining. Nice. But I nice. didn't read through the whole list, so it's one of those things to cover over later. Nah, okay, did I make him go full Tim sir. Allen here? Uh, I think you did. I think you did. Oh boy, sir, roster. There you go. Okay. Okay. Let's see. It's, it's like he's loaded up. There we go. All. Wowzers. Jiminy Crickets. Holy shit. That's a lot of people. Wow. Um, Including... All shows, women, legends, NXT, DLC characters, and NPC characters. We have one of my personal favorites, AJ Stiles. Um, some people know him as AJ Styles. I don't. Um, so AJ Styles, Akira Tozawa, Alexander Wolf, Alundra Blaze, Andre the Giant, Asuka, Bam Bam Bigelow, Baron Corbin, Batista, Bailey, Becky Lynch. Big Boss Man, Big Show, Bobby Roode, Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, Bret Hart, Brie Bella, British Bulldog, Brock Lesnar, Buddy Roberts, Bushwhacker Bush, Bushwhacker Luke. Looks like I might have to buy this after all. Uh, Cesaro, <laughs> Dean Ambrose, Diamond Dallas Page, Diesel, Dolph Ziggler, Dusty Rose, Amber Moon, Emma, Eric Young, Eric Rowan, Finn Balor. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, the, the Demon King has returned. Uh, oh, excellent! It's yeah. good to have him back. Bray, Bray Wyatt did the poor mistake ah, before. Did yeah, <laughs> a couple weeks ago, Bray Wyatt uh, uh, spilled some blood all over uh, Finn Balor, and he went a little cuckoo. So the Demon King is back. Um, Gold Dust, Hideo Tommy, Jinder Mahal, uh, the modern day Maharaja, uh, John Cena, Retro John Cena that comes in the deluxe pack. Uh, Kalisto, Kane, Carl Anderson, Kevin Nash, Kevin Owens, Killian Dane, Connor, with a K, Kurt Anger, Kurt Anger, <laughs> Kurt Anger is here, Kurt Angle, <laughs> if you pre-order it, Lita, Luke Gallows, Luke Harper, Luke Skywalker, um, Cool Hand Luke, Luke. uh, no, um, those two were a joke, Mark Henry, <laughs> Mickey James, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a special DLC character. The force is strong in the people's elbow. Um, Mark Henry, Nikki James, Neville, Nikki Bella, Nikki Cross, uh, Nikki Six, uh, also not. <laughs> uh, Paige, Randy Orton, Rob Van Dam, Sami Zayn, Samoa Joe, Sasha Banks, Sawyer Fulton, Seth Rollins, Seamus, Sin Cara, Summer Rae, The Rock, TJ Perkins, Undertaker and Victor with a K. Along with more to come. So. Oh, well, there was a cover reveal trailer. And this is the one that we were, uh, you had just talked about. Um, 
where even more characters like Brutus BK, Cactus Jack, Chris Jericho, Edge, Goldberg, Jake St. Roberts, JBL, Macho Man, Randy Savage, Mankind, Papa Shango, Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels, Sting, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Tatanka, Ted DiBiase, Triple H, Ultimate Warrior, and of course, uh, Shinsuke was front and center in that. So, I'm sure I've said this before, but to me, I can't, there's no difference between you listing WWE characters and you list in He-Man characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's one of the same. Especially Victor and Connor. Um, yeah. For the Ascension. I mean, they're, they're the same person. Uh, yeah, well, the, the thing of it is, like, I think that there's a big part of Masters of the Universe that is essentially just pro wrestlers running around. Um, isn't, there, isn't there also a WWE guy who's a, a G.I. Joe or something? I know there was an NFL uh, guy. Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Sergeant Slaughter. Thank you, Greg. So there's that crossover. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You should, you should like, list characters and just have me try and pick where they come from. <laughs> That's amazing. We I, that. <laughs> we're going to have that prepared for the next time. For winter break. Because um, I want to be there for that. Uh but it's also worth noting there's a Nintendo Switch version of WWE 2K18. There you go. And a special collector's edition called the Cena Nuffs Nuff Edition. We don't talk about that one. <laughs> I, I was enough. so it's non-existent. Yeah. Right. Oh, I, I was talking. Okay. In real life, John Cena. Okay. Anyone who ever says they should have turned Cena heel. I'm sorry, but everything he represents to kids and his fans, I don't think that's ever going to be a possibility because there's a reason why they call him the face of the WWE. Um, but yeah, I mean, it took a while for Hogan to turn heel. Yeah, but um, what, real life or as 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 far as uh, in ring, uh, <laughs> um, as far as in ring though. I, he's Goku, you know, it, it takes so much to beat him. And then when he beat him, he just gets stronger and he comes back and he wins. Um, is it the but, kind of thing where like, cause he's the fate, cause he's like the main protagonist. He's a bit too, he, he's too boring. Cause you know, he's going to end up winning. He's very OP, very OP. Um, so yeah, so, and so basically, there was an entire fan base screaming for him to go in Justice Two, WWE edition. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. We'll get to that too. By the way, thank you for bringing that up. Um, <laughs> you saw it too. Uh, yeah, I, I actually just also pointed to my right, like as if George was sitting right over here. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> but but it, it's like I told Jake, I'm like they really don't want me to buy this game because they put Seth Rollins on the cover. I don't like Seth Rollins. They have Kurt Angle as a DLC character, and okay, Kurt Angle was a great wrestler, never one of my favorites. And, and then they have the special edition John Cena package, and I'm like, I don't need to buy any copy of this game, I guess. <laughs> great, thank you for saving me money. But um, but speaking of DLC characters and what uh, George was alluding to, George, why don't you... They, they made an announcement today, didn't they? Yes, Injustice they 2? did. Yes, they did. For Injustice 2, they announced the uh, second round of DLC characters to come, and they've talked about the first one being revealed. So in the last one, we had Starfire, we had Sub-Zero, because, of course, made by Mortal Kombat creator NetherRealm Studios, and they also added the Red Hood for the first pack, well, second pack coming around, and right out of left field, I certainly was not expecting this, they've announced Hellboy. Yeah, He'll be yeah, making his good. appearance in a DC game. So I'm completely flabbergasted and gobsmacked. I want to see what his movesets are. A dead Dark Horse character who's currently residing in Hell coming out in a DC game. I think maybe it has to do with it's a Warner Brothers game. And I think Hellboy was Warner Brothers. Not entirely sure. Really? Was it? Yeah. I think it might have been. If only we had someone here. 
this is, would this is... look upon an internet movie database to tell us <laughs> if Hellboy well, was a Warner Brothers movie. If uh, I'm... yeah, hardly. Did, but, um, didn't they didn't they recently announce who's going to be vo- him in the reboot? Oh, no, they didn't. Oh, did they? Or did they? I I don't want to know. Um, um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, David Harbour. David Harbour. Who the hell's David Harbour? Police Chief Jim Hopper in Stranger Things. I'm one of the few people on Earth who hasn't seen Stranger Things, so. Is she all he's got credited on? On the. Wow. Columbia TriStar. Thank you. <laughs> I was getting Columbia there. TriStar. I just got there distracted. <laughs> <laughs> so that's even weirder. Um, but, it's so uh, weird. Looking at this list of DC characters, and then it's just Hellboy and Sub Zero in this list. Well, Raiden and is, Raiden uh, and Raiden. Yeah, so Raiden, I just yeah. found him. And uh, Black Manta was the third person they revealed. On, uh, yeah, I'm just reading that right now. Yeah. At least Black Manta's DC. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that. That's a very valid point right there. I, oh, so I don't. I, I just, I just realized I'm really glad we've got to DC because there's some DC stuff to talk about. Oh, there is. Yeah. What do you got there, Jamie? They. Uh, well, this morning I believe I woke up to see the Joker was trending on Twitter, and you got to always think that's an interesting one to trend. Why is that? So the first article I read was confirmation that uh, Jared Leto is going to be in Suicide Squad 2 and the Gotham Siren movie, movie they're making. Your favorite! But Gotham then, Siren. But then, complete left field, Martin Scorsese is attached to a Joker origin story that will not be attached to the DC Cinematic Universe, whatever. Okay. Basically, for some reason, they're doing a Joker movie that's completely different to everything that's already exists. So, wait, is this supposed to be like the Killing Joke retold in live action, or is this like some type of justification for Joker's existence in the Marvel? Well, well, not Marvel. <laughs> oh, we're going to that. Uh, the the. DC universe, even though it's separate, kind of a thing. Maybe. Uh, Warner Brothers DC are in the early stages of another Batman universe spin-off movie. This one turned the origin stories of the signature villain, the Joker. The studio has set the Hangovers, the Hangover movies, Todd Phillips, to co-write a script. Phillips will direct, and Martin Martin Scorsese will produce it with Phillips. This will be the first film under a new banner that has yet to be named, in which WB can expand the canon of DC properties and create unique storylines with different actors playing the iconic characters. And uh, where, where did you where did you see this? What side uh, is this from? I'm currently on Deadline. Deadline. Okay. So That's... basically, the plan is they're going to set up a completely different universe with completely different actors playing the exact same characters. That's I mean, maybe. I mean, it's what they're doing with their TV shows, essentially. Um, I get. Mm. I. Yeah. I can't figure out what they're doing. I don't think they can figure out what they're doing. Scorsese like, films, early '80s homage, written by guys who did. Hangovers, Tom Phillips, plus Scott Silver, who did Eight Mile and The Fighter. What kind of? Bet you anything, Zach Galifianakis is going to be playing the Joker, reprising his role from the from Lego the Batman Lego movie. movie. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why would they want to make a good movie <laughs> at this <laughs> point? Good God! Is it another one of those cases like slap a name, people buy? Pretty much. All I just just leave Brittany alone. That's all I can say. It's like they don't know what they're doing, and nobody's, and everyone's just like, they're all just running around like headless chickens, doing things and knocking things over, and things are happening. And yet there's no one 
there's no one available to help them. They just so need they... to rein it in and no one will do it. <clears throat> See, I love that image you said, like headless chickens, because especially after that recent uh, article saying that Wonder Woman is, I think it already broke the record for highest grossing superhero yep. origins movie. Yep. So I think that might have lit a fire underneath headless chickens and just made them run around at light speed at this point. Everyone with, wants origin stories. No, we, we don't want that one, though. <laughs> the thing Please. with DC is, Man of Steel was okay. That's probably how that was how it was viewed. It wasn't the best start to their universe, but it wasn't god off. It didn't stop it in its tracks, kind of thing. Yeah, like it gave you enough to want more. You just wanted better. Instead yeah. of instead of working with that and figuring out what to do, they decided to go eight steps forward and chuck billions of characters at us at once. And they did that twice. They did that with Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad. They came out with two movies that they should have built up towards, but instead threw it at us immediately. And then they went back and did something a bit more simple. They did a normal origin story. And they, and they did that great and they did that well and now for some reason for some reason they've decided they invent, they had one successful movie mm -hmm. and now they're just throwing eggs in any baskets they can find yeah that's that's pretty accurate it's like someone walked in and said let's people want to see the joker let's do a movie about the joker they're like great that sounds really good he goes but a different joker Oh, what now? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, what? Well, I don't know. Exactly. Let's, different, uh, let's jo just... different Joker, different universe. We'll get different. A different. We'll get a different Batman probably. And we'll <laughs> we'll do the Joker's origins because no one's ever done that. It's, like, it's a good reason no one's done that. It goes exactly, and the guy just walks out. Yeah, I don't know. Let's um, let's just pull something out of our ass. Huh. Yeah. It's the Hulk. It's the Hulk. <laughs> That's rather large. I have a lot of someone's ass. Yeah. I could, oh, yeah. I could almost see them doing that. I can almost see them sitting in a room thinking, okay, we've got Shazam. We're making the Shazam movie. Let's make him fight the Hulk. They're like, we don't own the Hulk. The Hulk's Marvel does. <laughs> no, the Hulk's good. But we make the Hulk green. The Hulk's already <laughs> green. Like, Which color of Hulk has not been done by Marvel yet? We'll take it. How about Yellow Hulk? No, it's oh, not the sure. colour, it's the character. We can't use the character. <laughs> run, what if... run, run. It's the Doomsday. Run, fuck, run. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, God. You don't think this is supposed to be like some kind of weird lead-up to Crisis on Infinite Earths movie to compete with the Infinity Wars, do you? Oh, sweet, Jiminy Crickets, you might be onto something right there. Oh, man. Oh, no. You. What well, have you what, wrought? Of all the things they're doing so far, they're probably going to do a Justice League movie, where it's going to be Superman, it's going to be Batman, it's going to be Wonder Woman, Hellboy, <laughs> Sub-Zero, and The Watchmen. <laughs> and yeah, bring back Ron like, Perlman, I'll go watch it, but why not? Yeah, why not? They're just gonna get. Like they're gonna end up doing something ridiculous before they do the simple things. I can see them doing that. They really don't have much sense. Like they're... I could literally see if they went out because isn't at the moment DC Comics they've kind of like hinting that Watchmen takes place in the same universe or something. Oh yeah. I could see them doing that before they like do a Green Lantern movie or something. I could see them being like. All right, let's skip. Let's let's not do Cyborg and Green Lantern. Let's do a Watchmen versus Justice League movie. I can see that. I, I could see them doing that. That's... It's a sad <sighs> state of affairs when you see that happening as a possibility. It's a shite state of affairs, Tommy. And all the fresh air in the world won't make one bit of fucking difference. <sighs> that, was yeah. from that was from That was from that was from Train Spotting. Also, uh, latest rumours from Justice League is that the current reshoots have cut out all of the Lex Luthor scenes. <laughs> well, considering an also word from that same set is that the first cut is unwatchable 
their words were unwatchable. <laughs> I mean, damn, man. Uh, you just think. <laughs> It's like, it's weird that they're like, there's all this stuff tiptoeing around, like, there's all these rumours that like, Ben Affleck's not happy with Batman, and like, Jared Leto might be recast as Joker, they get, all, you know, there's, there's all this talk about actors being recast and stuff like that, they should really look behind the scenes and figure out what's, who behind the scenes is messing up all their movies and just kick them out. That's, that's a good, that that's a better idea, I think. It's me. Oh shit, Randall, why are you fucking up the DC movies like that, yo? I mean, Marvel. Randall. Randall. Iron Man paid me. Oh fuck. Randall, Randall's there in like uh, the Batman v Superman, he's just like, alright, and then Doomsday comes in and kills everyone. I'm like, um, sure. And he's like, and he's into a subscriber, he goes, let's cut out the joke and give us more Enchantress. Yeah, like Jerry. And then Whoa. like, he, and then Randall just happened to be busy during the time they were doing Wonder Woman. <laughs> I mean, he got, he got close. He was almost like, give the guy a stupid moustache and make him Ares. <laughs> like, damn, the actor just managed to do it. I didn't realize he was a studio exec, too, on top of everything. Randall's a busy guy. Shit, he's really in making moves. Oh, shit, making moves. Bah, 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 bah. I swear Are you sure he's not Hermes people. in real life? Just jetting from one job to the next and just doing it multiple times? I don't know. He's, he's something. What he is. But I, I, I will say this also. That um, I believe also that this has been a podcast. This has been more of a podcast than a, than a Suicide Squad is a movie. Wow. And this is coming from someone who really does not like the Suicide Squad movie. Jamie does not like the Suicide Squad movie. I want um, to like DC. I don't want to hate them. But it's just so easy. The, <laughs> the bloody, the Justice League reshoots are having to spend money on their VFX to digitally take away Henry Cavill's mustache. Because he yeah, refused just... to get rid of it because he needs it for Mission Impossible 6. That's, that is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Thanks. Completely ridiculous. You you are right. <laughs> but um But I think that uh for this week I think we've reached an end of our journey. I'd like to thank Craig for being here this week. Thank you, Craig. I'm scared, Poncho. <laughs> oh god. Alright, big bucket of wind to Sonny Laugham, who was who played Billy from Predator. We lost him. Oh, yeah. Can... What we hot and ain't no man. We all gonna die. Thank you, Billy. I'm sure that's what uh. the boys wanted to hear right now. <laughs> we have some sort uh. of alien predator coming in to kill us all. We all gonna die. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> Billy, pipe down. <laughs> Don't you have something to do like go cut your chest on a bridge? Um... <laughs> Got that a bit. Uh, okay. <laughs> Do you know that any list about the Predator movie, the original Predator, yep. just turns into, and Shane Black did this, and Shane Black did that, and Shane Black did that? <laughs> he did a lot of stuff. He did a lot of stuff. And he has a girlfriend with a very large body part. Oh, so my. Anyway, Craig, thank oh, you. you know, what? Thank you what? for being you, sir. Thank you. Um... George, thank you for uh, for coming in. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, sorry for crashing through the window, but uh, no, no, you know. no, it's fine. We can fix that. We have more windows. And um, uh, sorry about the technical difficulties we were suffering earlier. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for Randall for doing what you do and so well when you do it. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And of course. Happy birthday and a big thank you to Jamie for coming on tonight. We appreciate it. Shane Black's girlfriend. And, <laughs> and apparently you're going to be occupied for a little while. So, uh, so hey, Craig, uh, people, uh, people like things like fantasy football. They do. 
They do. Now, I think you're one of those people, and I think you might do a podcast with Britt about it. Why don't you tell me about it? I do. Uh, we just recorded episode 10 today. Um, it's called the Fantasy... <clears throat> Excuse me. Go easy. Whew, water. Uh, Fantasy hmm, one. The Football Fignuts podcast. There you go. Um, you can find us at fignutsdfs.com. Uh, same name on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, we talk about fantasy football, some other kind of random stuff. Uh, we talk about things like DraftKings, if you're into the daily sports or daily football sports. And uh, we talk about beer as well. So if you like any of those things, um, swing by the website or uh, download the podcast. It's on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Player FM, and Google Play. There you go. And, uh, of course, if you want to hear more from the rest of us here at Team Deba, please check us out at TeamDeba.com, where you can check out the weekly poll list, where Jake tells you what comic books you should be reading for the week, which comes out every Thursday, where you can check out a new episode of the podcast, also that comes out every Thursday, with a rotating cast of awesome people that's available on Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Player FM. You can also check out the monthly Loot Crate review from Jamie over here. He uh, does it, and you guys should read it. And, of course, if you would like to check out the gaming videos that we all do, run on over to youtube.com slash team And uh, remember, new video, seven days a week. Hit subscribe, like, turn on notifications so you never miss a video. We got some good series coming up. Just uh, just last week, Team Dad, team Dad Jokes uh, Season 3 premiered. So make sure to check that one out. And, uh, Ooh. yeah, has George in it, and, and James in it, and Dave in it, and me. So, uh, so check that out. And, uh, on a personal note, folks, uh, it's that time of year again. Time for everyone who said, Christ, Charlie's back on the podcast. Looks like I'm not listening to this till he gets back to school. Well, welcome back, kids. Because I'm going away for a while. Won't be hearing from me while I'm away doing my academia stuff. So, uh, it's been fun being back from the su- for the summer. Gentlemen, especially you, Craig. Uh, the, the, the calm is yours. Uh, everyone who's going to be on the podcast, please treat Randall and Craig good. And, uh, don't <laughs> give them a hard time or I will kick your monkey asses out of the group. And, um, <laughs> let's see. I'll shine it up real nice, turn it sideways, and shove it up your candy asses. And, um, yeah, I think that about does it. Th- thanks for having me on, Craig, for these past few months. No, oh, no, thank you. And, uh, I'll see you guys later. And please remember, until then, this has been the official Team to Bob podcast, number 206. Have a good winter, folks. And please remember, don't be a hero. Good night.